Right. Right. Okay. right. Okay. And well, I've, I've very seriously thought about spinning her off as a character <laughs> for the next one here because there's a lot more depth. And, um, like a fake element, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the other question I have is, is for you. Uh, you worked uh, military intelligence, which are counterintelligence. Yeah, more, yeah. Sort of an oxymoron, sort of. But uh, <laughs> the, uh, do you have to go through, I guess it would be the Department of the Air Force when you publish? Uh, the answer to that is both kind of a no and a yes. I did a check before I published my first book if they wanted to see anything in the book because I, when I got out I did have to sign all these disclosures, non yeah. all these things. And their guidance, they came back to me, if it's purely fiction, it's not based on any investigations and there's no compromise of any uh, methods, tradecraft, that kind of stuff, uh, then no, we don't need to see it. And in mind there, there isn't any. I remember that, that really bad story about Tom Clancy getting pulled in by Congress because you know, and he had to prove he got everything from Library of Congress or he would have been shot at sunrise or something. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> well, there's a lot of issues with that, and I'm very familiar with that, but no. Uh, as long as I keep my books, or any author keeps the book in the world of fiction, it doesn't go into any past operations or cases, or doesn't compromise any uh, techniques, then there's not a problem. Okay, so you did have a, class, a security classification when you mm -hmm. were working. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, a couple of questions again. Um, what age would you say is going to most relate to your series, your books? Probably the general age of all of us in here. Would young adults um, um, like? I, I hope so. I mean, that's why I did a, a younger character. I've had some teenagers read it um, and like the plot, but wish that there were a teenager involved in it. So. And uh, I, I think uh, they appeal to really any age. I think the, uh, well, not any, probably 18, type 17, 16, and above. Uh, the first book might be R rated. There's one chapter that gets kind of gory in the very first book. There's none of that in the next three. There's no real bad language, no sex, per se. So <coughs> pretty much, these are pretty much PG 13. Uh, and I would have, if you asked me that question and I didn't have feedback from a lot of people who read the books, I would say probably people who are 30 to 90. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have some friends whose kids like the books, really like them, and they want to read them first. And these are 16, 17, 15 year old uh, kids. And then my d daughter's uh, boyfriends, husband or whatever in one case, but boyfriend and another who's 24, 25, he, he really liked them. Again, He's not even my daughter's boyfriend anymore, but on the recent one, he sent me an email saying he, he really liked it. So uh, I, I'm not surprised per se, but I didn't really expect that. I, so any group. My focus was probably more for the middle age to older crowd, because he's like 40-ish. And the other question I have is, quite often in dedications, it'll be, I want to thank my writer's group. Do you, each of you belong to a writer's group, or do you just have your own personal friends that support you? And um, or do you find that a writer's group is a good thing to have for a young writer or a new writer? For a new writer, probably so, yes. I don't belong to one because I've never been, I, we kind of move around. We, we have one started here that I belong to, so I guess I do belong to yes, one, don't belong. I? Yes. <laughs> you better rephrase that, that yes. <laughs> and it, it's my first experience and I'm enjoying it and it's kind of, we've got people in the group that have a lot of experience with writer's groups and then those like me that don't. Um, so I think it's probably a good experience. I just haven't had that much. Have you? From, from my standpoint, I think writers groups are good. Before I got published, uh, and before I actually stopped working, knowing I was gonna stop and, and get involved, I joined the San Antonio Writers Guild. And I was a member there for four years. And one thing they do is they have an annual writing competition. And uh, I, I think I only, it, submitted things like three years, and every time I came in second. So, you know, I felt like, what, Avis, try harder? But still, it was, it was good to be acknowledged, because it's you know, a million plus people in that city, and it's the real writing guild. They have a couple other organizations, but as far as getting together with authors and all, that's the big one. Uh, but after, uh, in, in 2007, I dropped out, really for personal reasons than, than anything else. 
uh, but I haven't gone, haven't joined him, gone back to him now. And now that I'm writing, and, and that I'm, I'm a member of a couple writers, kind of organizations. We're both members of the Military Writers Society, and uh, I'm a member. You remember the Public Safety mm -hmm. and the Public Safety Writers, mm -hmm. national national organizations. And uh, you know, there's a lot of mystery writers of America. I'm a member of this. So, so there's a number of bigger groups that that may get together once a year on a conference or something like that. But that uh, I've joined. But I think for an aspiring writer, getting involved with a writers group, the one here, the one wherever they can, is really good. They do a lot of self critique and motivation. I spoke last week to the Harlingen writers group, the Valley Byliners, and we did a writing exercise to start mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. What talent in the group! I was just blown away by the talent you know that I gave them five minutes to write a story I gave them a little scenario and they had to write a story and a lot of creativity so I think yeah a lot of advantages to it yes uh, you both uh, members of the right military writers or were you in the military as well? no you work for no the it's I got in I, I got into it through this Korean War veteran and I started writing about uh, I have a veterans. question about your, your process. Uh, I just finished, or I'm in the process of reading uh, one of the, from one of the local authors here, and I was reading through his book, and it was only, it looked like it was self-published almost, but uh, I are an English teacher, and I kind of ran into six or eight errors in the book. Uh, so I was curious, do, do you have you know, like editors reading your, do you still call them galleys? I don't know. Well, we don't uh, call them galleys. I guess we do officially. Uh, I mean, no, I don't call I don't say anything. I mean, it wasn't, it, it was more of a uh, Microsoft Office thing than anything else because they were, yeah, like it, the words moth for mouth and, you know, minor theirs and that kind of stuff that, yeah. that's, that the computer doesn't recognize. Right. So I don't yeah. know, do you have, uh, do you have editors that work with you or for you or, or just, why you want to go first? Probably, <laughs> I go first. It, make, it, it, it really, it, it's, a, it's a good question because the whole mm -hmm. publishing world is going through issues with that and more right now. Uh, probably that bothers me. I don't know. No. Else if you're an English teacher, yeah. it bothers me. Yeah. 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 I also was a Spanish yeah. and French teacher, so yeah. around yeah. here yeah. people, yeah. Put, they don't speak any Spanish at all, yeah. and then they put these lines on my like, and uh, where did that subject go? Where's the subject of sentence? And sure. Don't have a sentence. No, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good question. I can read a 500-page book and they misspell one word and you see it. And right. Just, yes, absolutely. Yes. No, no, it's a good question. The is, as yeah. soon as electronics came in, newspapers, publishers, everything, the first jobs they eliminated. And you're right. That's what I'm saying. It's a real issue out there. Machine at all levels. Or yeah. then you should proofread it yourself. It's a, it's and you can tell, look at any newspapers, Probably say, <laughs> you know, before in the early 60s and then afterwards. And it's it. that way. Yeah. Because that was one of those proofreaders they fired. <laughs> <laughs> but, you're, but, but that's exactly that's right. Good. The first place they cut the editors up in the, yes. in the big. So, it, it, from my own experience, I probably expected my small publisher to do more editing than they did. I had a group of people I knew help me out with it. Uh, so I progress from that where you probably find more errors in my first book than in my this book, and I'm at the point where I actually have a person I pay now who's an English teacher to go through the book and help me from the standpoint of I call it line, we call line editing or what, making sure that I have all the commas right and everything. And so it's a real issue, and uh, I think even at the uh, uh, you can call it the top level, the big literary agencies now have got to have had to take that more on than the publisher, the publishing companies, because the publishing com companies now are kind of pushing, they want that perfection before they even get it. And so uh, the literary agencies are pushing it back down on the individual authors. Uh, obviously they can't do it to the Stephen Kings and Tom Clancy's and all, but for uh, new people coming in, a lot more of that's being thrust back down at the, at the lower levels. Okay. Unfortunately, if, you, if you're the writer and you make an error, the first time you won't see it the second or third time. That's, right. That's true. Your error. I, uh, you thought it was right to start with. Yeah. Well, I don't think I've ever read a book that you've not that I've not found an error in. Yeah. That's just human nature, but we can do a lot to eliminate it. I am an editor, and I've been an editor since the '80s, so I do a lot of editing too. And I have an editor uh, for that reason because you're right. You can read something over and over and over again, and you do not see it. And I can guarantee you that when I have a book come out, that I'm going to find an error in it. 
that I that nobody found the entire time. It just never seems to fail. And it, it may be this little comma somewhere that all of a sudden is the glaring part of the book. <laughs> you know, where was I before? So, so it, it, it does happen. But to answer your question, as I've progressed in writing, I've I felt the need to actually hire people to do that myself. Absolutely. Now, do you see the the actual published book before it goes on the shelf, or do you? Yes. And mm -hmm. yes, I, what my publisher does is sends me an advance review copy, a PDF copy, right. and and uh, uh, I go through that, and even then I still you find go a couple. Or you have somebody else go through. It. Well, he's already done all his stuff. He gives it to me now, and at that point, at that point. Uh, that's a good question. I think I have probably a couple other people look at it too. But at that point, I think we've already we've already had all the scrubs. I, I go through with a lot of other people, like the, my editor, before I even send it to him, and then he'll go through it and come back. And I still find one or two little things that you catch. This is four months after I read it. Five months. I haven't seen the book in five months. He's had it six months, four months, depending on how busy he is. And then he'll send me back a PDF copy that I can't change anything on it. All I can do is let him know what's what's uh, what I found and all. And there's still ways that the mistakes get through because it's not in the body of the story. Uh, and later on, you find something, uh, but uh, it's 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 not that many. And I think we're getting better at, across the board. But that's the industry whole problem because of what you mentioned with the cutting back of the people that used to be really good at editing. And it's getting a lot worse. With I don't know how many of you have e-readers, uh, but if you read e-books, there's absolutely nothing involved today to getting a book out there published. And the mistakes in the books are just legendary. I mean, they're horrible in a lot of the books. So yeah. there's there's no filter anymore on, with the internet on getting. Yeah, it's just sort of like, sort of like an eBay system on books now because. Uh, you okay? Are you okay? Oh, are you okay, Steve? Yes, I'm fine. Okay. Sorry about that. You want to try another one, or do you want a real chair? <laughs> Chair that uh, take more stress. Well, that's brave to use the same chair. So that's my thing. Yeah, he's got one. Thank you. This is the chair on the platform. It was interesting to mention the PDF because he was talking about moth versus mouth or there or there. The, the errors that I find amazing are the ones that should have a red squiggly line under them, you know, and you know, with the PDF, you're not going to see them. Yeah. But, yeah, that's right. But, the, but by the time it gets that back to me in a PDF, it's gone through all the word checks, everything else. It's been edited uh, by, but by myself or I mean by whoever I have doing it for me, and even the publisher, which has, I don't know, which is one person uh, going through the books for him probably is a small publisher. And they can still find every now and then something in there. And they, will, they will correct it. They will correct it. Oh, I'm sorry. What I'm saying is, it. at that point, it's set the way he wants it. Everything's done. And I just can't go back in and change it anymore. And But I can call him or send him an email saying, on page 7, can you fix this? He'll fix it. Okay. I mean, he won't have a problem fixing it. Don't oh, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. But it, it's, at a, it's at the final state there where he doesn't want me to uh, rewrite. rewrite a paragraph or something. Yeah.